but we'll be filing it anyway. But if you're just joining us, welcome to today's session on working with rows in Power Query in Excel. Again, this content is taken from chapter three of my book, Modern Data Analytics in Excel. You can read it if you want, but you are under no obligation to have done so uh, to follow along today. All right, download files. I'm putting those in the chat again. If anybody comes in asking for them, feel free to, to recopy and paste that because unfortunately, when people come in fresh, they don't see uh, the, the history. So I'm going to go ahead and click that link myself just to walk us through what to do here. Okay, so uh, you should just be able to let it download in your downloads folder. I'm on a PC, assuming most of you are as well. Okay, looks like it's taken me a second here. Uh, it is a slightly bigger repo. This is all of the resources uh, in the book. Okay, so any of the data sets or the solutions, the exercises, everything is here. Let's go ahead and just decompress that. Okay, make sure you do that. Some people aren't familiar with compressed folders. So just go ahead and uh, if you see the little zipper, you can actually click right there, extract all. Okay, and uh, we are gonna head over to chapter three, which is transforming rows uh, with Power Query. Okay, so I believe that's where I wanted to go. Yes, okay, the exercises are gonna be uh, in this folder over here. Time permitting, we may actually work on the exercises in the book together. Uh, so we'll see how things go uh, in terms of time. I have this slided for an hour, but individual results may vary. Uh, we'll see how things go. All right, I don't see any questions in the chat, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press on here. All right, I'm gonna assume that, that you all have had some, some basic familiarity with Power Query. I'm not gonna assume that you're an expert. We're not gonna get into uh, coding with M or anything like that. This is definitely more still of a beginner type session here, okay? Uh, we are gonna go into the Power Query editor. We're gonna point and click. And our real goal, again, is to build reproducible data cleaning workflows. So instead of having a messy data set like this of signups, where every workplace party or occasion or report or whatever, you have to you know, go in manually, hide this row, delete that column, and now we need to filter. And now you're gonna put this value here, but don't put it over, and, you know, and then things break. I'm sure we've all felt that pain before. Uh, you're on vacation, you get a phone call, people can't write, read your report, people can't run it. it. It sucks, right? So how can we avoid that stuff with Power Query? That's our goal here, okay? Uh, so for our first example, uh, these names come from a somewhat familiar uh, American sitcom. Fun fact, I was actually in uh, California last week recording for LinkedIn Learning, uh, and I drove past the actual filming location uh, of the office. Uh, if you're connected me, with me on LinkedIn, I actually posted a couple of photos of that and tied it to a, a story of one of my other blog posts. But these are from the American office. Uh, it wasn't filmed in Scranton, it was filmed in LA. Anyway, so we're gonna take these names and build a sign up report. Let's say that our party planning committee, you know, every time people sign up for this event, uh, they're just tired of like getting rid of duplicates. They want it sorted. Uh, they want misprints gone. They want blank values gone, stuff like that. So I'm sure that we're all familiar with data entry that might not be as uh, high integrity as we want. Right? How can we use Power Query to do that? Not once, but build a recipe that can be reused and reused and reused, so that it's just kind of a one and done process. All right, so let's gonna let's do this. All right, we're gonna start here. Uh, let's go over to data. Okay, uh, we're gonna go to from table slash range. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see is that Power Query requires your data to be in specific formats. I'm talking mostly a table or a range. Now there are a lot of other places you can get your data from in Power Query. If you've got data coming in from a database, a CSV file, or even the web or wherever else, you can do those things. We're gonna focus on data that's already in your workbook. And if that's the case, generally you want your table data to be in a table. And that's what we're gonna do right now here. Okay, so where's the data for our table? It says A137, sometimes Excel, when it sees these blank values, it, it gets a little confused about whether that data is contiguous or not. In this case, it, it, it sure is. So let's go ahead and just select this entire range. Okay. All right. And again, we're in chapter three. If you're just joining us, let me head back over to the uh, chapter three right here with the book, the downloads. I put that in the chat. 
Okay, it looks like people did come in since then. So let me just put that link in that chat there again. All right, so we're in data from table slash range. Make sure your data is selected contiguously from A1 down to A24. The other thing we need to do, sometimes if you have data that's a lot of text, and I forget the exact rules here, but uh, if there's a lot of text and there's not a lot of numbers, uh, Excel doesn't quite know, is this a table or not? Or specifically, do you have headers in your table is really the, the main factor there. So since this is text, this is text, Excel is just a little confused about whether this is really a header or not. Make sure that that's a header. Make sure you click OK and get that turned on. All right. And now you're going to see we're in a secret passageway, Narnia portal add in pop up glory here. OK, this is our Power Query editor. So this is where we're going to do our work in Power Query. If you've never been in here before, welcome. Uh, you can check out the book. I've got some other resources on like understanding what this tool is, how it works. I'll try to get you all up to speed on that too uh, if you haven't used this before. But what we're going to go ahead and do right now is uh, get started. First, I'm going to name this query. So you're going to see that mine got named table two. That's just the generic name. As you add tables, it increments table one, table two, et cetera. So you can double click this. Let's name this query something like signups. Just to make this more clear what that is, as you see here with this blank space, there you know, is an opportunity to work with multiple queries. So as with everything in computing, you want to give things good names. All right. So we're going to give it a good name here. We'll call it something like sign up. All right. So our data is in here. And you're going to notice, again, if you've never used Power Query before, there are a couple obvious big uh, differences. First thing here, if I click inside these cells, you don't have the option to hard code into these. There's no option to edit. There are a lot more constrictions and restrictions. I guess constriction is a word. Uh, restriction is definitely a word uh, for how this data works. All right, so uh, we're going to need to use, and we are going to use these menu options to make those changes. You're going to see we do have a ribbon, OK? But instead of this ribbon having things like you know formatting and uh, graphs and stuff like that, uh, this is all just data cleaning. It, Power Query is your data transformation tool. That's first and foremost, its primary purpose. Okay, so you'll see here, now there is a way if I go over to view, okay, there's a formula bar over here. Uh, you can click that on and off. There's an advanced editor over here. So there is some, some code that's being generated. And you know, as you get more comfortable and familiar with, with Power Query, you can certainly get into that. When people get started, though, I don't think you really need it. Everybody's got their own opinion, but I would say focus on just getting the most value you can from the point and click editor. And that's what we're going to do today. All right. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. First thing we're going to do is let's remove the missing values. You're going to see this looks a little bit different in Power Query when we have. And if I go back over to Excel, You'll notice we have some missing values here. You'll notice Excel is kind of like frozen right now. There's not really any way to get back to our data set. There are some workarounds for this, but in general, when you're in Power Query for a data set, uh, you're kind of locked out of making any edits, okay, to this raw data set. So, but you'll see that, you know, we do have blanks here, like row 20 is a blank, but if we come down here to Power Query, okay, it's 19, I think, because of the header. Okay, so there's a difference, you know, Excel, the header is row one, but row 19 in Power Query is a null instead of a blank. Now, if you've ever used databases, uh, you're familiar with this idea of a null. It's a nice addition to Power Query to have this, Excel doesn't really have a dedicated missing value, uh, and that can cause some problems. There's a little bit of ambiguity when you have a cell that's blank. You don't know, is it zero? Is it missing? Is it supposed to be missing? Uh, so uh, question about if we have the file open in the browser. Um, yeah, Power Query is really more of a desktop only tool. So uh, I think that's the question there. Uh, there might be some, uh, you know, things with Power Query on the web that you can do, but I, I don't really do do it on the web. Um, so, and in general, I think it's a good idea because, right, you're trying to make your data process, you're trying to give it integrity. You don't want any undocumented changes to your workbook, right? So I think it's probably a good thing that that's the default setting. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these nulls. These are missing values. And we're going to go to, I believe it's under transform. No, it's actually under home. Okay, so let's go over to home. You're going to see remove rows and you're going to see remove 
duplicates. Okay, I'm sorry, remove blank rows. We'll get to remove duplicates in a second. Let's remove the blank rows first. Okay, and then let's remove the duplicates. So you'll see there are some duplicates here. Okay, let's go ahead and remove those duplicates as well. All right, and you're going to notice that every step we take down here is documented, like I was talking about. So what's nice about this, what you're going to see is that uh, this will create like a little recipe that we can use and we can run on autopilot. OK, so we're not going to need to manually do these steps anymore, where if you've ever used the macro recorder in VBA, this is kind of a similar idea, right, where you're pointing and clicking, you're getting visually the results that you want. It's all recorded in code, and then you have that code that you can run. So similar kind of concept here is what we're trying to do. So we just removed our duplicates. We removed our blank rows. You'll see here that now we have like a play by play kind of a, a replay about what happened. OK, so our data source looked like this. Change type, what this means is that, again, Power Query trying to give more restrictions to your data. Uh, every column of that data set is going to be ascribed a certain data type, whether that's text or number or date or whatever else. We're not going to get too much into that. We're just going to assume that Power Query knows what it's doing there. Uh, but, but every data type, uh, every column has a data type. Remove our blank rows, remove our duplicates. OK, so you'll see we have this replay. So if anything goes wrong, we don't really understand, you know, what happened. I'm sure we've all tried to like audit back a set of processes when building a report, and we don't really understand exactly where things went wrong. This makes it a lot easier to figure that out, right? When everything's documented like that. All right, so we did that, we sorted, we removed, okay. And let's go ahead and, uh, actually we didn't sort. We got rid of the blanks, we got rid of the duplicates. Sorting should be pretty familiar. All we're gonna do is just click our, our little filter button up here. And this looks almost identical to what you would see in, in legacy Excel or basic Excel. Okay, let's go ahead and sort that. And then again, you got another step here. And you can uh, you can rename these two if it's helpful, you know, like instead of uh, remove blank rows, if you wanted to call this something like remove nulls or whatever, oops, I just, Move that to my other screen. Uh, let's make that a little bigger, bigger, control shift and plus. Okay, so you can rename these. Uh, you can order these if you want, change the ordering if you point and drag and drop them. Okay, you can undo these as well. Uh, there's no uh, control Z on this though. So make sure you really want to do that. Uh, generally, it's not too hard to add a step back, but uh, there's not like you can't control Z to undo this if you click that X button. So anyway, we sorted, uh, we did all our steps. The last thing I need to do involves a little bit more subject matter expertise. So when we were talking about data cleaning, you know, all these steps help, but sometimes it really does take a human in the loop to understand what's clean data and what's dirty data. And specifically, I'm looking at a misprint right here. So uh, this looks like something that shouldn't be there. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this case is just filter that out, all right? And uh, now, now our data is looking good. So we went from something like this that was very messy. It was hard to know exactly who was coming to the party, how many people were coming. You know, there's just a lot of noise in here. And now we have something that's just you know A to Z sorted, ready to go. And our goal here is to build this to be repeatable. Okay, so let's try this out. We're gonna go over to close and load. All right, I'm gonna go to close and load too. Now, if you go to if you click close and load it should do the job. I'm going to click close and load too, just so you see this, because my default settings are a little different. I, I changed them. Um, the default setting is a table. This is going to load your data back into a second table. So this is going to stay the same. This will still be there. You're just going to have a cleaned up version of that table. OK, other options. You can put this in a pivot table. You can put it in a pivot chart. So just a pivot table plus a chart. I don't really know why it says pivot table report. As far as I can tell, it's just a regular pivot table. Uh, if I'm wrong there, let me know. Uh, only create connection. What that's going to do is uh, keep that query running in the background or available, I should say, in the background. Uh, this is particularly nice because what you're going to see as you get more grown up in Power Query, you're probably going to be working with multiple queries at a time. You're going to join data sources together or append them or do different things where you'll have intermediate queries and queries referencing other queries. So when that's the case, you know, you don't really need to have show like all your intermediate steps, uh, print them into Excel. Uh, so that's good as you get more advanced, but putting this into a table because we're done here, we're not going to use this as the input into any other query. Okay, add to a new worksheet, add to data model. I'm also going to check this off. Okay, um, so I think I have some sessions on Power Pivot coming up later 
Uh, this is your road into Power Pivot. So if you're looking to build a relational data model, okay, where this is particularly useful if you have maybe like a table with customer information, a table with inventory levels, a table with sales, and you want to build a report with all of them together, you want to get more sophisticated in terms of, you know, looking at KPIs, measures, maybe building a basic dashboard in Excel. So that's what Power Pivot is. We only have one table right now, so that's not really necessary to use that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just click that off. Okay, uh, make sure it's a new worksheet, make, make sure it's a table. Let's click okay. All right, so we have our cleaned up data set here. And what really the big win is here, I mean, this is nice as, as it is already. But what I'm gonna do is, and let's call this, I'm just gonna double click this and call this something like signups, clean. It gets a little confusing, unfortunately, you know, when you have your, input data set and your output data set in the same workbook. Uh, but we'll just call it something like signups clean. All right. So if I were to do something like just mess this data up a little bit, right? Let's insert some rows. Uh, I'm going to put another person in here. I'm going to give Phyllis even more uh, rows. OK, let's add some more here. OK, so we just desecrated our data set, what's going to happen next? Do we need to re-click this, re-delete these? No, you don't, like, no more of that. So no more of the manual uh, dancing around acrobatics in Excel. All we're going to do now is let's head back over here. OK, let's right-click. You may have done this in a pivot table before. We need to refresh that query. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and refresh, right-click, refresh. And you'll see everything gets done, right? All those extra blanks, the extra person, there's still one Phyllis. So now we have things on autopilot, okay? If you wanted to uh, reuse this, and let's say you've got a report that you do every week where you're following these steps, right? You have a recipe now that you can use, you can repeat, and you can get a lot of time back to focus on what matters in your work. Awesome, okay. Any questions? Um, I see Hillary just coming in. Uh, for those of you who just came in, let me uh, let me copy and paste the download files so you have them. Uh, we're in chapter three, okay, and we are we just went through one example. I have a couple more examples, uh, and then what we'll probably do is uh, have time for some exercises. All right. Any questions? Everybody doing okay out there? Okay, no news is good news, I'm assuming. All right, let's go to example two. Okay, so this is one of my favorite examples of what I can do with Power Query. When I do training out in the real world, uh, I don't just do you know free sessions behind my desk. Uh, this is one of the jaw droppers, uh, along with pivoting, which I've done in other examples, other workshops. So let's take a look at, at how to delimit this data by rows or into rows. What you're going to see here is we've got people here, we've got signups and, you know, maybe I just want to get like a head count of people per department or something like that. All right. How would we do this now in again, classic Excel, probably what I would try to do is something like text to columns. I'd come over to data. I come over here. Okay. And okay. Let's limit this by comma, right? You'll see, right. We have these, this delimited by comma. Okay. This is pretty messy. It's, it, I mean, it would in theory let us take a headcount, but I, this is not what I would call like clean or tidy data. What would be better, right, is if I had each person on its own row, that's going to make it a lot easier to visualize, analyze, assess this data. So how can we do this with Power Query? And again, how can we do this so that things, yes, this is being recorded. Uh, how can we do this so that things are repeatable? Again, that's the name of the game here. Let's head over to data again from table slash range. This time our data is already in a table. Okay, so you'll see that that Power Query editor just pops up again. Table one again, we should call this something else. I already have signups. I'm just going to call this like delimit. Uh, probably a better name, but let's go ahead. Control shift and plus just give it a name that is better than table one. All right, and let's head over to our data. Again, control shift and plus. Uh, are we going to have the video? Well, if it's being recorded, then yes, you have the video. I think that's kind of the same idea. 
Uh, anyway, okay. Uh, we have our signups. We have our uh, departments here. So again, what we want to do is delimit this data. So I'm going to select this column here. It's signups. Okay. Uh, I'm going to head to split column. I'm going to split by delimiter. So this is a similar language, right? We're still trying to split our column, but there's just an extra section here that we have. All right. So split by comma, fair enough. Okay. We're going to split it each occurrence of, delim of the delimiter. So each time we get a comma, okay, it's going to split. Now here's the magic part here. It says advanced options. Do we want to split into rows or columns? Now, if I click okay right now, you'll see that we get something pretty similar to what we would have in classic Excel, which is not what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these steps. Let's go back to where we were. Okay. And now let's split column by delimiter. Okay, we have split it by comma, advanced options. Let's split into rows this time. So again, make sure you hit that drop down. Okay, split into rows and click OK. All right, so now this is good, right? This is what we want. There's one more thing that we're going to do here. Okay, uh, you're going to notice that there's some, some extra space. Now, the reason that that happened is that when we split by the comma, there was still a space. So if I go back to my, my source, right? So we split by comma, but there's still a space between each person, right? So it's really, we wanted to split by a comma and a space, okay? Couple of ways that we can fix this. First option, let's right click here, transform and I think if I do, I don't forget the difference between trim, trim and clean. Anybody knows, you're welcome to chime in. Uh, but that was one option. So again, let me go back and do that again. Uh, transform, we can trim it. Okay, so that'll get rid of those. Our other option is actually, and there's certain uh, steps in Power Query that will actually let you, if you see this little gear wheel box right here, it'll let you redo those steps. Okay, so if I click that gear wheel, all right, that'll take us back to the menu where we where we were. So what I can do here is instead of splitting my comma, I'm going to split this by a comma uh, and then a space. So this is a little bit more advanced, but it is more efficient, right? We're doing more and fewer steps. Uh, let's click OK, and you'll see that that gets fixed. Again, change types is just something that Power Query does by default when it creates uh, and works with columns. Again, it wants to make sure that every data set looks like this is already a uh, text and it looks like I don't think we even need that right because we already have this as text so if you see a step like that in general the data sets we're working with it doesn't matter too much as you get again more advanced you're building more advanced reports things like data types and transforming data types and stuff like this are going to matter I don't make any claims to be you know the number one data engineer a power query if you want somebody like that you can look at other resources but I think for most people this is going to work well for what you need to do. Okay, um, any questions so far about what we just did there? Again, one last step, we'll load this into Power Query, uh, and then we'll go on to another example. Okay, let's go ahead and load it in. If you remember, we go to Home, we go to Close and Load. We go to, again, I'm gonna do Close and Load too. And I'm going to have you do the same this time because we are going to adjust the settings a little bit on how we run this. OK, so close and load. I'm going to create a pivot table this time. Oh, I think it's, I'll show you how to go back. If you did what I just did and you clicked OK or you selected something a little too fast or it wasn't exactly what you want, I'll show you how to how to undo those changes. Uh, go to data. All right. Queries and connections. OK, so this is going to give you a list of options here for uh, I'm not a list of options, but a list of queries. And this is going to list all of your queries in this workbook. So this is a nice rundown to know what data sets you've got, how you added them. So if I go to delimit, what I'm going to do is let's do load two. That'll bring that option up again. So I didn't want this in the data model. I'm going to have that turned off. I do want it in a new worksheet. Let's click OK. Mm -hmm. OK, it's going to say, do we really want to do that? Yes. OK, so now we have a regular non power pivot pivot table. If you wanted to go back to your editor, click edit and you're back to where you were so you can make any changes again that you want. OK, so again, that's data 
queries and connections, and that'll list all those queries there. Cool. All right, any questions? We're doing really good on time. Uh, we're about halfway through, so I've got one more example for you, uh, and then we'll take a little time out. Uh, it's not going to be a break, just kind of like for announcements and stuff. Uh, and then I think with the time left, we'll we'll go through the exercises, give you some time to practice this, and and then we'll go through the solutions together. All right, I don't see any questions, so I'll keep going here. Okay, last example. Okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, clean up this data set. No, no surprises. So this is pretty common. I've had this issue before where certain like ERP systems or POS systems, the way that they exported data was kind of goofy, right? So you might have some excess rows up here that don't really mean anything. You might have blank values, stuff like that. Now, this is a nightmare if you were to try to put this into a pivot table, even if I were to right now, right, insert a pivot table. Okay, let's just make this right over here. And let's say I wanted to find out like total sales by day or something like that, or total sales by region, I should say. Day would be fine. Region though, you'll see that we have all these blanks, right? So we're not mapping the sales to each region. So what, what we really need to do, right, is fill this in. And you know, you probably had to do this before. It looks like my flash fill didn't work so good that time. So it's a messy process. So how can we fix this with Power Query so that this is just gonna be good to go every week when we uh, run these reports. All right, let's check it out. We're gonna go to data. This one, we do need to put into a table from table slash range. All right, my table has headers. Let's go ahead and click okay. We're gonna fix this uh, right from the bat. So don't worry about how this is really the, the first row. Okay, let's just go ahead and include this. It's gonna be an easy fix. So here we go, we're back in Power Query. And again, you're seeing our list of queries over here. We can toggle between them, do any work that we want to them. I'm gonna do again, Control Shift and Plus, just to make that a little bit bigger. I'm gonna call this up like ERP extract. Now you can have spaces and things like that in these names. I just find it useful to put dashes between words, but whatever style you want is fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, First, let's get rid of this row, or particularly what we're going to do is replace the first row with headers, and that's actually right here. Use first row as headers. So uh, Power Query kind of read your mind, right? There's a lot of user research involved in, like, what are the most common data cleaning techniques? What do people have to do a lot? And I really mapped this well to the kinds of operations that most of you probably do all the time. Okay. A uh, question about some cells are having small green triangles on the left edge. So I think what that is more about, Yulia, is that the data is being read as text. Um, there might be a way to um, transform the data in Power Query so that it's no longer text and it's the proper data format. It's a date or a number. I'm not positive, but um, that's what's happening there. And, and there are certainly different functions and, and features to convert text into the proper format. Um, but I, not off, off the top of my head without knowing the, the specifics, it's, it's hard to say for sure how to fix that. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use first row's headers right here. All right. So now we have our data, right? Region day and sales, those weird hash signs are gone. Next, what we're going to do is fill this data down. Now, you're again, you're seeing that these are nulls. These are blank values. And this is really going to mess up trying to report on this data. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure you select this. So if you're going to do specific operations on a specific column, OK, you'll just select that column. If you want to have multiple columns selected, it's just control and select. But this is just one column that we're selecting. All right, and let's go ahead and head down to transform. And we're going to go down to fill. OK. And we're going to fill down. Now, fill up, I'll just do that so you see what's the difference. Uh, it takes the first missing value, right? Or the first, I'm sorry, the first found value, and then it fills it up. So you see, there wasn't anything found down here. So it's null, 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 null. It finds west. It fills that up until it finds the next full value, right? It fills that up again. Not exactly what we want. We want the opposite. We want to fill down. So let's go ahead and fill that down. Okay, so that is what we want. Awesome. All right. 
last but not least, let's report this thing. Close and load. Close and load two. I'm going to make a pivot table. OK, I don't need this in the data model. Again, that's for working with multiple data sets, trying to build a KPI dashboard data model, relational data model. This is just one table in general. If you're working with one table, you don't probably need the data model. There are exceptions, but right now we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so we have our pivot table and now it's going to be super easy, right? Total sales. There we go. Would have been very difficult back here if we find our data set wherever it went. Uh, there it is, right? As we saw doing this weekend and we got is just a pain. It's not even Flashville can't even save us for some reason there. So uh, anyway, those are the examples. All right. Congratulations on getting through chapter three. So we're, we done, got done pretty early. So what I'm going to do right now is just a few housekeeping things. Uh, you're welcome to, to stay for the for the time being. Uh, if you just were here for the main content, you're welcome to file out. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, before you do so, you might be interested, though, in my upcoming uh, events. These are all, I think, I don't have any paid ones. Yeah, these are all free. OK, I have them booked for several months in advance. All right, so we just did Transforming Rows. I'm going to be out next week, uh, so I'm not going to have one, but we're going to be talking about Power Automate. We're going to be talking more about Power Query. We're going to get into Power Pivot. A lot of these have to do with my book. So if you see the book icon, that's the indication. Some of them don't have to do with my book. Uh, and we're going to talk about API, or, sorry, AI, not APIs, but that would be a good topic. Uh, Python and Excel. So all sorts of topics to really help you get the most from Excel. And these are 100% free. And I don't know if you've ever gone to a lot of <laughs> webinars that people do, but they uh, they sell a lot. Uh, I don't really sell very much in these. Okay. Uh, I guess I sell the book, but you know, I don't have like act now and you'll get my course for you know, 80% off. I just find that kind of, kind of gimmicky. I just want to help the community. Specifically, I want people to know that I'm a good resource for getting help with Excel, okay? Uh, whether that's an individual or a business, I just want to get my name out there and let people know. So with that being said, if you want to fill out this feedback form, this is really all I ask, right? This is my call to action. I'm not doing some gimmicky buy now and you'll get my, you know, famous scrubber one for 20% off or, you know, all I want is your feedback. Uh, it's just a few questions. And really this would help you too, because this is going to give me data to know what are you looking for? What did I do? Well, what could I improve on down at the bottom? There's a, uh, testimonial. You can just write a few words. This would really help me out again. So that I can share my authority and let people know, uh, that I'm a trusted name, right? In Excel. Uh, and that I'm trying to just help the community. So that's it. Um, okay, appreciate the kind words on the book. Uh, thank you everybody who uh, does that, who signs up for this, I'm saying that, signs up for other webinars and fills us in. Uh, I'll send all this stuff out in an email as always, the recording, the events, everything else, the downloads. Last but not least, let's go ahead and uh, walk through the solutions. So for those of you who are sticking around, high five, because this is the time to make the content yours, right? I always like to say that you're not going to become an athlete by watching sports, right? Like you got to get out on the field yourself and do it, right? You're not going to become an Excel expert by watching somebody use Excel. Like you got to do it yourself, okay? So that's why I have exercises in all of my books. I don't think a book is really complete, at least a technical book, without exercises. Because otherwise, you are kind of just watching some other person play sports or do Excel. I guess so this is the time to make it your own. So we're going to go to the exercises here. And you're going to see that these come from the book. OK, uh, so we're going to go to this PowerPoint. I'll keep this up on the screen. The exercise files are over, oops, over here, chapter 3. So here are data sets. All right, so you have the solutions, but try not to peek because we'll go through these together in a second. Uh, let me share my screen, or at least the full screen. Okay, okay, so chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. All right, 
So here are the uh, here are the instructions, and again, these come from the book. So uh, there's some data sets here. There's a states worksheet. There's a Midwest cities worksheet. Let me open that up really quickly, so just so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here are data sets. You'll see that you know there's some steps here that kind of talked about. That might look familiar. What I might be asking you to do there. This is delimit, right here. What I'm probably gonna have you do is fill this down. All right. Go back to the uh, things. OK, so yeah, you need to remove a row, fill down blanks, sort, load, load into different formats, pivot table versus a table, et cetera. OK, so hopefully this all makes sense. Uh, I'm going to give you all, let me count my timer. Uh, if I give you all like seven or eight minutes, I think that should do it, because that'll take us to quarter till, and then we'll take the rest of the time to go through the solutions and take any last questions. Uh, I'm going to set the timer. Let me know if you have questions. And good luck with this. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you're finding this valuable. Uh, this will all go out in an email later. So don't worry about, you know, copying any links down. Let me start the timer, give you some time to work on this. We'll come back, we'll go through the solutions, and then we'll call it a day. All right. Now we got it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll see you in a few.
All right. Welcome back here. I uh, didn't see any questions come through over our exercise time. Uh, so what we're going to do is just briefly walk through them together and then we will call it a day. So hope these went smoothly for you. Let me get situated here, open up this workbook. Okay, so first step here, uh, we want to remove this total because otherwise it's gonna mess up our reports, right? We're gonna double count all, all of our population data. That's gonna be our first step. We're gonna fill down our blanks, we're gonna sort, okay? And then we're gonna load our data into a pivot table for ease of analysis there. So how can we do all this in Power Query? First step, data from table slash range, okay? Make sure we get a nice name for this table. I'm gonna call it something like uh, census or you can call it whatever you want. Okay, uh, like I mentioned, I kind of slipped this in uh, to the conversation earlier, but if you want to work on multiple, uh, actually let's remove this, this row first, United States. We're just gonna filter it out, okay? So let's go ahead and do that first. You're gonna see there are a bunch of nulls here. We don't wanna remove those, right? Because this is meaningful data. Uh, and really, we should have this data filled down because otherwise, as we saw earlier, it could be really difficult to report on this data. So we just got rid of that. We filtered those rows. Next up, this is why I slipped in casually earlier. If you want to work on multiple columns at once, what you're going to do is hold on your control key and click on that. Now, you could individually uh, fill both of these down. I believe it's under transform. Uh, there it is right there, fill. And again, make sure you're filling down. Okay, so we can do it this way, do it again, but you can actually, you know, just get rid of both of these at once, hold on control, click division, and let's go back to transform. Okay, and let's fill that down. Okay, so that is fixed. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We got rid of that total row. We got rid of our missing values, or we filled them in really. Uh, we're going to sort, and again, this one looks very similar to classic Excel. Okay, and last but not least, let's go ahead and load this into a pivot table, close and load two. And we're going to close, close and load two in pivot table report, pivot table, whatever, same thing, new worksheet. Okay, cool. All right, so now, you know, if we want to know what's the total population by division. Pretty easy to do that. We can break that down. Uh, by region or vice versa, okay, uh, and very easy to slice and dice and explore this data with pivot tables. Okay, so that was the first one. Second one, we're gonna head back over to the Midwest Cities worksheet. And again, we're gonna delimit this thing. So let's check that out. Data from table slash range. Okay, that's the right range, but we do have headers. Again, if you have a bunch of text, Excel can get a little confused whether your data has a header or not. Let's click OK. And I'm going to call this something like Midwest Cities. OK, Control Shift and Plus. Give some space there. All right, click on Cities again. You want to click on the column that you're going to operate on. OK, so in this case, it's just one. No need to hold on Control. All right, so let's, we're already here at home. Let's split our column by delimiter. And we learned from last time that if we split by a comma, we're going to get that trailing or leading space. So I'm going to be more specific here and let's split by a comma and a space. OK, that'll make our data just a little cleaner. OK, uh, yes, split at each occurrence and then the magic touch here, split into rows and not columns. All right, and let's click OK. Beautiful. OK, that's what we wanted. OK, and I said load to a table this time. Close and load two. And a table. OK, no data model. That's fine. Click OK. All right, so again, queries and connections is a step back. If you wanted to change the load type, if you wanted to make any changes to the actual power query. Uh, and again, you know, if you if we remember here, so, uh, you know, if I added. Uh, where is it? Uh, let's say that I added, I can't think of a, okay, Topeka, there we go. First thing comes to mind, you can add your own Midwest city if you know any. Okay, go ahead, change this data set, and let's go ahead and refresh this thing, and you will see, okay, right-click on that table, refresh. You can refresh over here in careers and connections as well, okay, uh, but I just went ahead and did it on the city, and we see 
Where's my Kansas? Okay, I should probably sort this as well from A to Z. That would probably be a good next step. Uh, sort by state. Oh, but there it is. Okay, so that is uh, working on rows in Power Query in a nutshell. Thanks again for, for hanging out and sticking around through the exercises. And again, making this knowledge your own, right? And, and not just watching somebody do it, but uh, you know, doing it yourself is very important. So I try to do that during these sessions when I have time. All right, any last questions? I sent out the feedback uh, or I gave you that link. I'll send everything out in an email in a second here. The recording, the downloads, future events, and the feedback form are like the major ones. Um, I think that's everything for right now. So I'm going to stop the recording, take any last questions or comments, and have a great rest of your day, night, or wherever you are. Uh, take care. Bye.